The 100 Acre Wood crew is back, but not in your typical Disney fashion. This is Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2, the sequel to the highly successful horror film Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. Now, while it was highly successful, it definitely did not succeed with the critics and even most of the audience, if you look at that Rotten Tomato score right there. But after a couple days, Winnie the Pooh 2, Blood and Honey actually kind of surprised everyone with 100% Rotten Tomato rating, which has now gone down, and I don't know personally what it is now, but the last time I looked at it was about 63%, which is about typically what I would have expected from a film like this, but I gotta say, like, I kind of got a little bit more excited for this hearing that, oh, they took all that money and made a better movie. And I specifically, I got very excited when I saw Matt Leslie was the writer of this who did Summer 84. Very, very underrated horror film. I highly recommend you go and check that out. But here we are. And I have not publicly talked on my YouTube channel about these taking public domain IP and making them into horror movies. I, I've made some comments on Twitter about them and maybe on a couple podcasts, but never on my actual channel. So this is going to be a very big review. Uh, I'm going to be talking about this movie. I'm going to be talking about their future plans that they talked about because this is the Fathom event. So they had a Q&A kind of at the start with the producer and the director where they're kind of talking about their future ideas and as well as my thoughts on the original Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, because I think we have to have that going into this. So this is strap in, grab your popcorn, grab your treat. Maybe you just got done seeing the movie. Leave your thoughts down below because I'm very curious to hear if I'm in the minority on this and also make sure to hit that like and subscribe button for more. So Kind of just as a context and background, I have to say that I do actually really support creative visionaries and I support what these producers are kind of trying to do to a certain extent. I, I wish they would maybe make original horror films and original horror slashers, but them taking public domain ideas is something that's going to be kind of interesting to see. And when they announced that they were going to be doing Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey back, what, two years ago at this point, I thought, oh, okay, like it's not my cup of tea, but maybe this can turn out and... It just seemed from like how that film looked, it wasn't anything of my personal thing. And I was just like, I'm not going to go support that. I don't want to see it. Saw the reviews, definitely did not care to see it. But I ended up watching it for the very first time because I knew I was going to go end up seeing the sequel. And I gave my time and I watched that movie and it's not good. Just, just flat out, it's not good. But overall, you know, I, I've watched a lot of CB horror films where you can watch them and you can like them for what they are and enjoy them but even then like the original blood and honey was just boring and when you go to a slasher movie uh, there's a couple things i expect sometimes i expect some cool lore sometimes i expect some good jump scares but overall when i go to a film like this i want badass and awesome kills and i didn't get that with the original one like they were just cheap knockoff and it was just felt like it was there to make money and it made money and that's cool because now they can make this Puniverse that they're doing, which they really much talked about the start of the Fathom event. And, you know, with this whole Puniverse, <laughs> I, I still don't I don't love the name. It's, it's funny to say to me um, hearing them talk about this, you know, even as someone who did not like the first one, I, I went into this optimistic thinking, OK, this is going to be better. And now seeing you know, they have all this creative passion and the way that they talk about it, it reminded me of when I had made some cheap horror films or horror short films, more likely. And they're not the greatest. They're not the best, but they're things that I am appreciative of and something that I'm very passionate about and really much taught me about the filmmaking process to a certain extent. So there's a part of me that like goes, I support what you guys are doing. I'm cheering for you guys to make this work. But at the same time, there's a part of me that's just not really feeling it. And, you know, they have a Peter Pan a nightmare film coming out, which sounds interesting. Uh, Bambi the Reckoning is coming too. If you went to this event, you probably saw the first uh, minute clip that they shared where you see Bambi flip a car over, which actually looked like pretty damn cool. I'm not going to lie. Maybe I'll go check that one out too. They announced that they're probably going to be doing a Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey 3. If I assume they would be. They're going to be doing a Pinocchio one, which that one could actually end up steering me towards the right way if they do it correctly because they said that they might be working with the creator of Chucky which is like interesting. And then they said that they're going to do like an Avengers assemble of all these characters where it's like Freddy versus Jason, but all these different madhouse public domain characters. And I'm wondering like does steamboat Willie now come in there. So many unbelievable things, but let's get to my thoughts on blood and honey too. It's okay. Um, I actually really surprised that had the hundred percent. Um, I don't know if people went into this with like the thought of like, okay, well, like the first one was, what a one out of 10 this has to be better right and they were just flabbergasted by how much better it is 
Because this film, I, I, I mean, the orig- it makes the original Blood and Honey look like a monkey made it. Like, literally, a monkey got a camera strapped to him and went around a forest filming something. Blood and Honey 2 is better in almost every degree except one, which I will talk about in my cons. And it specifically knew what it was. And I will say that overall, I think the story is there. I think it is a lack of directing here that really affects the movie. And I think the directing is actually the biggest problem with the film. But we're going to talk about that more in my cons. I like starting with my pros. And starting with my pros and the things that I really did appreciate about Blood and Honey 2 is flat out the prosthetics. In the first film, I was like, this just looks like a man with a Pooh Bear mask on him fucking up some kids. And Blood and Honey 2, it actually looks like a scary bear. Like this humanoid bear creature. And same thing goes for Tigger, and the same thing goes for Owl, and the same thing goes for Piglet. And what I really liked about this is actually how they crafted and gave personalities to each and every one of the 100 Acre Wood Gang. Uh, Pooh Bear is very much like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, kind of meets Michael Myers. Same thing with the likes of Piglet. And then you also have Tigger, who is very much Freddy Krueger, and Owl is just straight up Pinhead. And all those little elements really add a lot to these characters and something that was already 10 times better than what the original Blood and Honey gave, which adding into there adds a personality to the film that I think was sorefully lacking in the original one. Alongside this, Scott Chambers is now recasted as Christopher Robin. I have to say, way better. He kind of does like a Barry Keoghan thing here, so sometimes that distracted me a bit, but way better than the original Christopher Robin. As well as one thing I kind of have to give is while, again, this is borrowing from public domain and things like that, and it is kind of sorefully a love letter to different horror icons that, of course, the producers, the directors, and the writers all grew up with, this is kind of their Evil Dead 2 to a certain degree. Kind of very much a remake and a retelling and recanonization of the first film, and to the degree where the first film is actually like a movie in this universe, and this is just like the aftermath of it, so like we can... Like, personally, if you've never seen the first Blood and Honey, you really don't need to. They recap it pretty fast, and you see little glimpses of it on TV when some kid's watching it. Which, shout out, if you ever watch 3C Films, kind of tune in on that scene. Uh, you may be able to hear his voice. I'm, I'm not joking. I'm like 99.5% sure that was 3C Films talking. But I really like how they had that idea, and they structured that, and I think... It kind of brings that essence. You can see a cult horror classic film in the making here where you can possibly see a bunch of friends getting together to get drinks in them and laugh and have fun with this. Because that's really much what a lot of slashers personally are. And honestly, I probably would have had more fun with this if I was drinking, if I was taking shots, if I was with a group of friends. We'll talk a little bit about that more in a second. I definitely still want to stay on my pros because there are a couple more things that I did still appreciate with this film. And one of the other things I appreciated about was the lore, how they actually created and crafted a lore surrounding around the 100 Acre Gang. I actually thought that was like one of the most impressive parts about this. And truly enough, while I do think it gets a little bit too exposition heavy and really starts to drag the pacing down when they're explaining this all, and it definitely got predictable. You hear me talk about that in a second, but... I really liked the lore. I thought the lore worked really well and actually added, again, personality to a movie and a franchise. It's crazy for me to say that this is a franchise, but a franchise that was missing it. And on top of that, as an indie horror film, I think I've seen a lot of people compare this to kind of like the first Terrifier film and specifically more of the first one. That is something that you can personally see here. And I can see... 10 years down the road, people talking about, yeah, you know that there's a Winnie the Pooh horror film out there. Let's not watch the first one. Let's have fun with the second one. And the second one definitely has those elements to it. That is sadly where we need to start talking about my issues with the movie. And first off, the one thing I do want to say is that the worst part about this movie that is worse than actually the original is the cinematography and some of the lighting. I think Honestly, I was very disappointed to see a lot of the kills hidden in the dark. Now, I don't know what the choice or that maybe it was the projector that I was going off of, but any scene that was actually lit, I could see. I've been in bad theaters before where the projector had a dim light and, you know, it was always affecting every single scene. So I personally actually think it was more of a film issue, but there were moments where I could not tell what the hell was happening, who was getting hit, what was going on. Some of the kills you can definitely see, and those kills are fantastic and already 10 times better than the original. I mean, 
Tigger goes on a rampage, and I, Tigger's my favorite in here. I, I wish we had more of him. Again, we'll talk about that in a second, but that, that sequence was great, and the way they lit that one was perfectly fine. But the rest of the movie, that's kind of where it really lacked and kind of hurt me in a couple different ways, is specifically because you just can't see what's going on, and it takes away from any of the tension, the momentum, or those ooing and aahing, and those cheering moments that you can get when someone gets brutally murdered. And it's crazy to hear that you're cheering on that, but when you go and see a slasher film like this, that's kind of what you want to see. That also adds to the melodramatic avenue of this entire film, which kind of at times feels like a soap opera. Not something that to be proud of personally, and it's not something that I can sit here and be like, oh my god, I love this so much. No, a lot of the drama in here really hurt the pacing at an hour and 40 minutes it made the film feel at least at two hours felt like it was 20 minutes longer any sort of scene with exposition just dragged painfully and the second some of some of the expositions introduced it, it ties into something else automatically in the back of your head and even before then like when they're introducing these little layers i sat there going it's going to be this this and this and as i'm watching the movie i'm yep it is that and it's pretty predictable into that avenue. I think a lot of that also just goes down to the directing too, and specifically how they are telling these scenes within those moments. Also, I have to say, like, as much marketing as they did with, like, all the different Pooh characters, they're not really in the movie all too much. Like, Tigger has two scenes, one small one and one giant one at the end, which, like, the third act did make up for a lot of this movie. Like, I, I was actually ready to leave this movie and be like, this was terrible. The third act did win me back over because of how much fun it is. And that's like seriously like when the massacre and the murder starts to happening. And and I was all into that. And Tigger gets a moment that's just incredible, but not enough of him. Same thing with Owl. Owl's cool. And they don't really use him enough. And same thing with even Pooh. Like the characters just aren't there that much. It felt like they even had a bigger presence in the original one, which is saying a lot. And maybe I'm just like, expecting more of them in here but it really was christopher robin's movie and and that's okay i understand like you're supposed to focus in on that but it feels like for this movie like if i'm comparing it to like some of the halloween films with like michael myers michael myers has a huge presence throughout the whole movie when he's not on screen and in this sometimes it didn't feel like they were there and they were just kind of an afterthought maybe that's just me Maybe you disagree and you saw this movie, you're like, no, they had the best presence ever. But that's where we definitely have those thoughts down below in the comments section. I found that all of those things led this film to being not boring, but just not great. They almost cracked the code with this. And I and I can say that. Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2 almost cracked the code with making this public domain horror idea successful. I think they're almost there. To be honest with you, I'm still interested to see what Jagged Edge Productions does with Bambi the Reckoning, with Pinocchio, with Peter Pan, and potentially even a Blood and Honey 3. I think they're learning from their mistakes. They definitely learned from the first movie. They took that budget and specifically the box office that they made from that and really put it into this. You can see all the passion there, but they're lacking a couple different things. And I'm hoping that again, with these future ideas that they have, they're going to be able to deliver and give us those because I'm still not fully sold. I'm ready to be proven wrong, but I'm not fully sold on these public domain ideas yet until someone can tell a great story and craft a great movie. That's when I'll be proven wrong. But again, Blood and Honey 2, it's got its moments. It's got some fun kills when you can actually see what's going on. It's got good performances throughout the whole entire thing for the most part and the prosthetics the d monster designs the lore of them awesome loved all of that i thought it was very unique the personality they gave to this and it actually made the film feel like it had a personality truthfully maybe my expectations got the best of me but i do still check my expectations at the door i sat down i was like you know let's just see what this is and i walked away just going Okay, to the degree that when the film literally ended, when it came up and it said Director Reese Waterfield, I jumped right out of my seat. I'm like, that is a terrible ending. I walk down and then I hear someone talking. I walk back and I, I, I watch the, the final scene. There's a, there's one little thing right near the end of the credits. Um, and I watched it and I'm like, okay, cool. And I left again. Like, I, I just, very, very disappointing ending. Um, so, I, I'm mixed. I, I'm mixed. I have my issues. I'm complicated on this movie. So with all that said, I'm going to give Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2 a C-. Let me know down below your guys' thoughts. Again, 
the first Blood and Honey makes this movie look like a masterpiece and a cult horror classic. And I do still think that maybe a cult following will find this universe one day once it's all said and done. But for now, they're nearing that spot where I'm like, okay, they nailed it. And I'm hoping on the next film, Bambi the Reckoning, which I'm actually kind of interested in maybe will succeed into that avenue. Again, leave your thoughts down below, hit that like subscribe button, and of course, until next time, stay classy.